All right, so the next thing we're going to do here, um, we're going to simplify things for the rest of tonight. Um, and uh, we'll get into some more specifics about what I want to see in the schedule when I give you the requirements for our final set. Um, but tonight, I don't want to see Mark um, because that's not going to be the right type of thing for us. So let's get rid of Mark. Let's keep head height and width. And uh, let's keep finish, but also get rid of hardware section for now. So we're just going to keep it super duper simple and just have finish, the size of the door, the type of the door, um, and the type mark. Um, so uh, let's... Uh, wait, did I do that backwards? Type mark. Actually, we do need mark. Sorry. Um, add mark back in if you're following me. Oh, and move it to be next to type mark. All right. So, um, all right, this is what I'm going to do, guys. Uh, we need to establish the, the tags for each of the doors. Okay, so um, the reason I was, uh, you know, adding type mark and mark is because we usually create a door type legend that will correspond to the type mark column. Um, so in the drawing set that we're using and emulating here, these are kind of written out as, as single flush, single flush pocket, single French, whatever. Um, you can do it descriptively if you want, or you could just call it A type, B type, C type, whatever you want to do. Um, so we're going to do an A type, B type, and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing that you do need to call out is the actual number of the door, because in the plan we have, uh, we literally call out each and every individual door. Like this is door number eight. This is door number 15. Um, because, um, you know, the hardware, even if it's a, like right here we have two vision window doors, right? So we'd call it like a B-type door or something like that. Uh, they both have panic hardware, but maybe, you know, that one needs to have a closer and this one doesn't for whatever reason, right? So that kind of stuff is, is taken care of in, in the, uh, the mark column, right? Because you can itemize it by mark. Um, anyway, let's get back into it. So uh, we need to tag all of our doors. I'm sure you guys are somewhat familiar with tagging the doors by now. Um, you go to annotate, and we're going to go to um, tag all by category. Um, that didn't do tag all. No. Oh, I did tag by category. Tag do tag all, and then um, you can go to this. So we have we only have one tag loaded um, for door tags. So let's load it and take a look at what it is. Uh, looks like it's it's set up to be type mark which is good for us because that's what we wanted. If you edit that family type, you can check out the label and see what it's, um, what it's actually doing. And so it's, it's uh, checking out the mark, which is right. Um, all right. Um, so that's good. So that's really all you, all you have to do to tag the doors. Um, so here in our uh, mark column, we just need to uh, you know, give every door a different number. So if I call this door, door number 15, um, notice how it doesn't really like order it or anything. Um, you generally want to move that column over so you can grab a mark and move it up to the top. And then that one becomes like your, your number. So if I can, I can actually change the mark title of that uh, column and it'll change that, but it won't change the parameter name. So that, that part's kind of cool. Um, we also have the type here. Type mark is uh, the type of the door. So we've got the number of the door. I just want this to be called type. And so, um, you know, I'll leave it to you guys to change the numbers how you want. But like this number six really needs to be a number one, right? Because it's our most common door. Um, so if you change it, and this is our first time dealing with the type parameter in the schedule. A type parameter means that it'll change that field for every other family of that type in your project. So when I hit OK to this warning, it's going to change all of those sixes to ones. Then I go to the next one and I change that to a two. 
Then I go to the next one, change that to a three. And then this one to a four. This one to a five. This one to a six. And this one to a seven. Okay, now um, we've got tag doors. We have our schedule is established. The only other thing we need to create is a legend that describes these doors. Um, so let's go up to uh, view. Go to the view tab um, and go to legends. Is this the first time I'm introducing legends to you guys? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I am just going to reiterate though, a legend is different than a view. A legend can be placed on, um, on any sheet. Okay. So any, like you can do, you can have as many references to a legend on as many sheets as you want. Um, a view, you cannot, a view can only exist on one sheet. Right, like your, floor, your first floor plan exists on one sheet, and if you move it to another sheet, it moves off of the old sheet. A legend just, you know, applies to any sheet you apply it to. Um, so let's call this uh, door types. And in door types, one of the cool things um, about legends is there are these really cool things that you can add in that's called a legend component. Um, you guys are going to love this. So you click on legend component and, um, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, I'll drop that in. Uh, all right, so you click on legend component and uh, you can change the component type. Um, so what I want to do with this is I want to uh, pull down this menu and I want to look for a door of the type that I define. So I'll scroll down to door... Um, single flush, and this is the part where it gets really annoying, but I think we have a bunch of 36 by 84s. Okay, so it pops up and it's showing the plan view. That's okay, um, but I actually want to see it in elevation, so I go to elevation front and it shows me that door. So what we're trying to emulate here is all of these door types that are shown down here. We're going to do that for each of our door types. So then I copy this over. And my next, uh, my next one is uh, actually a curtain wall door. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go to the double flush. Um, so I'll go to uh, doors. I'll go to door double flush panel. And I think it was a 72 by 84. I don't know why that doesn't show the frame. It should show the frame. That's weird. All right, well, should show the frame. But anyway, you get the idea, right? So you can just create legend components, which are really smart components that are supposed to show the details of a door um, or, or window or whatever type of family you're working with. Um, accessories, equipment, whatever it is. This is super powerful. You guys should all be like ooing and aahing about it. Yeah. Is it only for the commercial or for residential? For what? For literally any family in the project doesn't matter what kind of project you're working on yeah anything it's super cool it's super powerful <clears throat> um, so anyway so anyway so we've got uh, I keep losing my train of thought guys sorry it's been a wild week um, so you go to annotate and you can just type in what type it is so if this is going to be a type 1 then you just call this 1 Copy this over, call this type two. Um, you generally want to create like a line or something that's going to help ground these things. Uh, so you can, you know, whoops, do something like that. So now you've got type one and type two. Um, you will want to dimension these and show how big these doors are. So we've got seven feet, three feet. Uh, this one is messed up, so I'm just going to draw the um, line in. So I'm going to go um, just draw a line around this and uh, offset that by two inches. 
out, out, out. There, that's good enough for me. Um, and I'll dimension this door as well. So that's also seven feet, and it's going to be six feet. Boom. Okay. So we pretty much just built that whole view, um, and you just got to run through all of the um, all of the door types that we have in our project. What questions do you have? Super fancy, right? This is one of those things that like revolutionizes what we do in the workplace. Yes, like create similar. Can you also build larger and put components? Uh, um, yes, 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 yes. Um, so basically, um, what you mean by components is like families. It doesn't have to be doors, doesn't have to be windows. Um, you can do it for furniture, like if this is a desk, right? Um, you can even do it for the trees, which is weird. Um, walls, silly. Windows, right? So it's it's a pretty universal thing. It's extremely powerful. Um, it's it's one of those things that you'll find um, a lot of people just kind of ignore when they're first learning Revit, and I think it's like super useful. Yes. Also, uh, so I opened up. I made a legend. It doesn't seem to be allowing me to place anything. Um, well, when you go to annotate and you go to component, you have to scroll down to legend component, so make sure you're dropping in a legend component. And if, it, if you're like mine, it's going to show that X, um, but you just change it up top here, and you can change the element. So I'll come around and, and help you troubleshoot if it's not doing it. Any other questions? All right. Um, so uh, what I would hope for you guys to have by the end of today is a schedule. It doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful. Um, and a legend started, and that'll be enough for us to get going into, you know, final production from there.